So we're gonna, um, this lecture is titled The Yoshio Aikido Guide to Harmonious Singing. And so what we're going to learn today is how Aikido can be used as an effective aid for singers. But in order for us to do that, we need to understand what Aikido is. Uh, so we're gonna have a brief demonstration from Rich and Joe. I've both been practicing Aikido for a number of years. And I'll explain things as it goes along. So down So Aikido is a form of Japanese Budo, um, and it uh, is studying martial arts techniques from a perspective of uh, growth and uh, discipline for the individual person. It's not about combat, it's about uh, growing individually and growing together as a partner. So uh, Joe and Rich are going to demonstrate a technique called first control throw, and then they're going to do each part individually, and then, um, and then again together, and I'll explain some things as, as they go along. So, Aikido, we have two partners, Shte and Uke. Shte is the deliverer of technique, they study how to be on balance. Uh, and Uke is the receiver of technique, and they study how to be off balance. As we do this technique together with partner, we're making fit with each other. But we also study the technique separately. So Rich, if you could please show just Shte's part. Thank you, sir. And then once again, just together. The purpose of us doing these separately is for form study, also to better understand the form, uh, but we do them separately to study safely as well. Thank you, gentlemen. So what are common issues that singers face? Uh, the four areas that I want to talk about today are breathing, tension, seeing what cannot be seen, and ego. So the first area that I want to talk about is breath support or breathing. When it comes to breathing and singers, I separate the body into three different areas. The hips to the floor, uh, the core, and uh, the shoulders and above. Uh, the, the Hips to the floor need to be very grounded, very solid, and very stable. And the purpose of this is that if our knees are locked or our legs aren't stable underneath us, we lose our balance and the core muscles around our spine will contract and keep our spine from uh, hurting ourselves. Uh, if this happens, that makes it very, very difficult to breathe. So we have a good, solid uh, stance uh, in, in our legs, our knees bent, our feet shoulder width apart, our hips uh, square in the center. And then from uh, that area up until the, the chest, uh, we want to have this area expanded and as open as possible and as relaxed as possible to get the deepest breath that we can get to be fully supported breath. And then from the shoulders and above, we want to stay very neutral. Uh, we study this a lot in lessons and we study this a lot in our own rehearsal and uh, we're constantly trying to find the best position that we can be in for breathing. Uh, but to find something outside of singing that helps us to do this can be quite problematic. And so what I wanted to talk about are common things that singers, activities that singers do physically to try and help with these situations. So we have running, yoga, and swimming. Uh, running is really great, cardiovascular exercise. It helps us uh, to deal with our breathing and strengthen these muscles. Obviously it helps us to strengthen our legs and our shoulders and above should stay pretty neutral. Uh, I'm not the best runner, so sometimes mine don't. Uh, with uh, yoga, yoga is really great for stretching, core strengthening, um, a lot of breathing is involved in yoga as well. Um, and it's a fairly relaxed environment, so it's also fairly safe. And then swimming is also a really wonderful uh, way to strengthen all of these muscles and get good body coordination. Um, the, there are some issues presented with these though, with running as an example. Usually we're outside or we have to find a place inside and we might run into allergies. Singers hate allergies because as soon as we have any kind of allergic reaction, everything gets swollen and we can't sing very well. 
with yoga, yoga is, is wonderful. I do yoga and I, I enjoy it. Um, but one of the aspects of singing that isn't really addressed in yoga is pressure. It's a pretty relaxed environment. It's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't think anyone goes to yoga to get stressed out. Um, but to train in that environment and also to hopefully train our body under pressure might not be the, the it might not involve that as well as, as other exercises. And then with swimming, unfortunately, to keep the pool clean, we have chlorine. Chlorine dries us out. As you swim and you breathe it in, it'll just dry you out, it irritates my throat. So while I, I also love swimming, I do it often, um, I have to do it sparingly when I know that I have to sing. However, Aikido presents something unique in that how Aikido helps. I want to demonstrate our, our basic stance, which is called Kamai. And so I'm going to have uh, a rich and Joe, please come back to the mat. And they're going to demonstrate um, Kamai open-handed and with the Boken, and I'll explain that in a second. Could you hold Kamai in tradition? So uh, Aikido comes from Aiki Jiu Jitsu, which is a, a war techniques that samurai learned uh, thousands upon thousands of years ago. And the techniques were, many of them based on the sword, uh, some of the spear, and then the knife. The open-handed version uh, does come from how we would hold the two-handed sword, the katana. Uh, this is called the Boken, the wooden sword version of it. Um, and in this position, you can see that uh, the legs being the position they are and the body weight forward, the legs are very active. It might look relaxed, but it's, they're very active. If you stand this way for a long period of time, you're going to get kind of tired. The torso is also forward. It's not back. It's not off balance. It's leaning forward, which allows the muscles uh, in here to be active and also to be expanded and open. And then the shoulders and the above are still fairly relaxed and neutral. Thank you. So this technique, the Kamai, is not the only time that um, physically is beneficial to Aikido. Kamai is a study stance that we use. Uh, it's a study stance that we use for all of our techniques. Any partner technique that we enter into, uh, we enter into into Kamai. Any uh, solo technique that we enter into, we start with Kamai, and then we also end these techniques with Kamai. But Kamai, the study stance, the arm position, and the, the bend of it is part of all of our techniques. The leg position, maybe more extreme uh, space in between, is all part of our techniques. The body position, the torso, being on balance is part of all of our techniques. So the benefits that we get from the exercise of doing Kamai are the same benefits that we get from all of our other techniques. Um, in a future lecture, I would also want to explore how the body movements of Uke are also presented in all of our techniques, but we just don't have a lot of time for that today. Um, so the next section that I want to talk about is tension. Three kinds of tension, physical tension, mental tension, and then I'll talk about fight or flight. Uh, physical tension in singing is problematic. I tell my students all the time that studying how to sing ultimately is studying how to get as much tension out of your body as possible and return to a very natural place. Uh, when we were babies, we could cry and cry and cry all day long, and our voice doesn't get tired, it doesn't wear out. As we get older, things change, our breathing changes, our body changes, but also our concept of what we sound like and what we worry about presents physical tension. And a lot of what I deal with on a daily basis as a teacher is just trying to get rid of physical tension. Um, and then also there's a lot of mental tension when it comes to singing. There are a lot of details. As a singer, we have to understand multiple languages. We have to understand what we're singing in those languages, what the other people on stage are singing to us in foreign languages, how we translate it to ourselves, all of the notes and the rhythms, and uh, where we're going to breathe, the, the details, all the things that the director tells us to do, where we're going to stand, where's the light going to be. Am I going to sing to the surtitle translation or the translation that I know in my head? There are so many details that we have to consider as singers. And a misstep in any one of those things can become very problematic, and we're always very stressed. I don't want to make a huge mistake when I'm on stage. And so mental tension certainly creates physical tension. Emotional tension creates physical tension. And so it can be a very vicious cycle. Usually what we enter into is fight or flight. Our body has that response where we either want to run away or we want to fight something. Well, we can't run off the stage, and we certainly can't fight anybody. That wouldn't be very professional. 
And what we have to do is stand there calmly in the midst of all of that tension and sing and produce at a very, very high level. So these things are very, very problematic. How does Aikido help deal with these kinds of tension? So we're going to have another demonstration, but I'm also going to talk a little bit more about this um, as they demonstrate. Rich and Joe are going to demonstrate a technique called all direction throw advanced, and I'll break it down for you. just at the moment, right before the throw. So in this situation, what's happening is Joe's not really being thrown, he's falling out of pressure. If Joe were to not fall out of pressure, and there was more pressure presented, his arm would break <laughs> at the elbow and at the wrist. And so the purpose of the throw, go ahead and throw, is to relieve that pressure. In this situation, there are two things that are happening. Um, you could just slow again. At the moment, stop right after the pivot. In this situation, as Joe is coming in forward to grab, Rich is moving out of the way. So he's meeting that tension with relaxation. His body's in good position, he's on balance. But he's meeting that situation with relaxation. If you go back um, and don't pivot, if he doesn't pivot, he's going to get grabbed or maybe punched very hard. And then do it again, please pivot. So he's moving that out of the way and he's taking that momentum and he's helping direct it to a different position. If you continue with the technique, sir. So taking that momentum still in a very relaxed way. Also, if Rich is too tense, it makes the technique very hard. And if Joe is too tense, it makes the technique very hard. Now, if you could stop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Once again, from that position, just right before the throw. So in this situation, if Joe is tense, if he wants to fight it, Rich could still throw him and still easily break his arm. And so, uh, quite a <laughs> Thank you very much. So being in this situation and being in this environment and training, uh, we're constantly presented with a lot of reasons to be tense, physically, emotionally, mentally. Uh, there are a lot of details in Aikido, where to put the hands, where do we put our feet, how do we shift our body, at what point do we do these things. Um, and so in our own study, if we care very much about our training, it can present that same pressure that uh, we feel as singers and musicians. But also, quite, quite literally, physically, someone is attacking you. And so to deal with that pressure, it can be very scary. To deal with those breakfalls, which we'll talk about uh, later on in the next lecture, can be very intimidating and very scary. Being in this environment and training outside of singing helps to train the mind and the body uh, emotionally and, and, and physically to deal with tension in a different way, to meet tension with relaxation uh, that I find is quite unique to maybe other things that we can do. Certainly you can find this in, in running. Uh, if you don't like running, I don't like running. I get very tense um, and my body tells me when I'm too tense. Uh, but it's a little different with this because you're doing it with a partner. Um, this, helps with other uh, situations that I'm going to talk about here in just a second. So the next section, seeing what cannot be seen. The connection between the conductor and the singer, the pianist and the singer, and the singer and other singers on stage. Um, uh, we're going to have a brief demonstration of Aikido and then a little bit of singing here in a second. Um, so Rich and Joe are going to do what's called a fifth cue continuation to a first controlled breath throw. And then we're going to have a study of buki, uh, which are the wooden uh, tools that we use for, for training. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about a topic called zanshen, which is final form. John, if you could please. after the throw. And this final form that you see rich in this is called Zanshen. The purpose of this is to stay connected with your partner. It comes from uh, old, uh, older battlefield situation where maybe someone's still going to attack you, you want to be connected to the person, maybe you didn't finish them off. 
in Aikido, we do it to still have that good connection with our partner in case there's another technique coming or what have you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, and we'll do the buki in just a minute. So this concept of Zan Shen, of staying connected, is uh, a wonderful study for certain things that especially singers in the beginning don't understand and it's hard to explain. There's a connection between a singer and a conductor that's very challenging, I think, to explain to a new singer uh, or any newer musicians. Um, a story that I like to tell is that there was a time when I was performing an opera and I was on a set that was pretty high off the ground and I was in the back of the stage. And I heard the orchestra, the music was reaching me, but I saw the conductor and it looked like he was ahead of the orchestra, where his beat pattern was, was far ahead of the sound that I was getting. And I realized, uh, he's not rushing, I'm getting him sound late. And I had an entrance from up there, so I had to sing, and I had to not only sing ahead of what I was hearing, but even just a little bit ahead of the conductor so that the sound would reach the audience at the right time that the music from the orchestra reached the audience. It's a very, very tricky thing, it's a very nerve-wracking thing. You have to just trust your instincts and your technique. Um, I noticed that some of the other folks around me uh, who were maybe less trained had a harder time with this and they were confused. It was during a rehearsal, and eventually we figured it out. Um, but having that connection with the conductor and knowing oh, I have to make fit with what he's doing, we do that a lot in Aikido. Aikido is the way of harmony. It's making fit with your partner, working together to make one technique. It's the same with the conductor. Uh, lots of stories you hear of singers being frustrated with conductors or conductors being frustrated with singers and whose idea is going to win the day. Uh, ultimately, the best performances are when both those two people work together. Um, but that's a connection that you can't see, and it's hard to understand and it's hard to explain. I think the same way as there's the connection with Zan Shen, it's hard to see and it's hard to explain. You definitely feel the difference when you're working with a partner and that connection is not there. Also, there's the connection between the singer and the pianist. Singers are expected, for the most part, to sing from memory, and we're not looking at the pianist. The pianist might be looking at us, but they're looking at our back so they can see us breathing, but there's a connection there and the way that we listen to each other and we feel the energy between each other and how we make decisions and how we respond without having any kind of verbal communication, even if we have a lot of rehearsal, sometimes that communication will change in the performance. And then of course, the singers on stage and how we communicate with each other. Uh, usually when I'm singing, I have to sing out to the audience, so I can't look at the people that I'm on stage with, but I still have to be connected to them. They have to be connected to me. And you feel that difference. It's very hard to, Again, explain that to a new singer, it's very hard to have that experience. I think that this is an experience that we can have in Aikido, and the training in Aikido and understanding this experience is, uh, it's easier to get it in the professional world, it's easier to get it in uh, a collegiate setting where the pressure is much greater. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a brief singing demonstration, as this is a lecture recital, with my accompanist Neil Campbell. And we're going to sing the first page of an Italian art song, called Caro Mio Ben. I'm going to sing it, uh, we're going to do it correctly the first time. And the second time we're going to intentionally do it wrong. I'm going to sing at my own tempo, Neil's going to play at his own tempo, we're going to try and not uh, fit together. It's actually quite challenging, we've had to rehearse how to do this incorrectly because we're so used to doing it correctly. And then we'll do it again correctly and hopefully you guys will be able to hear the difference. Each other. 
together. He's going to play his own tempo. Hopefully stick to it. I'm going to sing my own tempo. Hopefully stick to it. that I use, the, the volume that I come in at, the color that I'm using to shape the phrase. It's the same thing when Neil's playing the piano, what he decides to do, how he plays, how harshly or softly he plays, without any communication, without talking to each other, a different form of communication, I should say, affects the performance. Singers in the beginning, uh, myself included, uh, I think we're so worried about learning so many different things that this comes later than it should this connection with the, the pianist. And we're very grateful to really talented and wonderful pianists that save our butts. Uh, they'll be, they'll, they'll just make fit with us. And it's, uh, um, <laughs> I remember thinking, I don't understand why they're so frustrated with me, or I don't understand why they're so frustrated with that singer. And later on, you start to hear it, and it really is a collaboration between the two people. But understanding this connection, it's hard, it's not, um, it's not the easiest thing in the world, especially when we're really concerned and worried about what it is that we want to accomplish on the stage. What do I want to do as a singer? It's hard to think differently. What do I want to do together with my pianist? There is a shift that happens. I think that shift happens sooner with Aikido. In the same way that Aikido is not a competitive martial art. There are no winners and losers. The person that is throwing uh, Shte, who is throwing Uke, the person who is receiving the technique, they're studying how to be on balance to help Uke study how to be off balance. Uke is studying how to be off balance to help Shte study to be on balance. So it's cooperative. Being in that environment and understanding that, giving over, and we switch back and forth. Um, I'm Shte just as much as I'm Uke, and saying, okay, now I'm going to be studying off balance. Now I'm going to be thrown. In the beginning, I think it can be hard for people to think, oh, well, that means I'm losing. I'm hitting the ground. I'm being thrown to the ground. I'm not winning. And it's hard to make that shift, but once you do, uh, Aikido becomes much easier to study and train in. Once you do in singing, music becomes much easier to make together with your partners. Oh, uh, sorry, there's one other <laughs> bit about this connection uh, with Aikido that I want to demonstrate is Buki techniques. Uh, so if you guys could please. The technique they're going to demonstrate is called Kotakiri Gasayuch. Uh, it's a front strike to front strike. Um, it's a bit of a continuation. Okay. As you 
could too, do it again and stop after the circle strike, stop after the guy's huge. So in this situation, Joe has just tried to strike for Rich's head, having appropriate distance for safety. But if you look closely, uh, Rich has shifted out of the way, taken the momentum of that strike to Joe's wrist. It's important to stay very connected. You guys can please go back. <laughs> Not too it's important to stay very connected if Rich doesn't do the circle strike at the appropriate time to make the hit, or it'll be a sloppy technique, or if he strikes too quickly or too strongly, he might injure Joe's wrist. And so we have to be very, very careful in this connection with our partners and feeling where everything is, everything's not going to always end up in the same spot. And then as you continue with the technique, the purpose of this technique, and it's not there, just go back to it right after the gas fusion. This is two swords coming together, striking in the same space. And the idea is that the person that's striking harder or wants that more is going to deflect the other person's sword out of the way and, and strike to the head. If you don't have a good connection with your partner, things could go wrong kind of quickly. But we practice this and we're very, very safe uh, as we do it. Um, but we're, not told, we're told not to, talk, uh, to look at the, at the swords, but look at our partner's eyes and stay connected. Continue the technique. And then at the very end as well, having good distance and making sure and staying connected with your partner would be very easy if Rich was not being careful, if he was not uh, uh, paying attention, he could hurt Joe very, very badly. So in doing this technique together with a partner and working together, and please go to do the whole thing over. and working with our partners in the situation it teaches you again this very intimate connection but also under pressure. <laughs> uh, it might not seem like it because they're very relaxed and they're used to it but when you have a bokken flying at your face for the first time it's very scary uh, and to say oh I know I need to do my, my technique, I need to stay on balance, I need to work carefully with my partner, have good distance, have good timing. Maybe my partner is coming in slower than I expected or faster than I expected. I have to make a fit. If I don't, someone's probably going to get hurt. Uh, or the technique isn't going to work the way that it's supposed to. We're not going to be able to learn and grow together. Very much the same as with music. If I decide, you know, I want to sing this slower, and if he decides, well, I'm not going to play slower, well, then the music falls apart. Or if I decide, I'm going to play, I'm going to sing faster, and he's going to keep playing slower, then the music falls apart. And someone's got to give to make the music work. The study of etiquette is something that is also paramount in Aikido. It is the other side, I would say. It's uh, equal, 50-50, the physical techniques to the other techniques. If, as you notice, we're bowing to each other a lot. Uh, they're bowing to each other as partners. Uh, the study of etiquette, is the, you know, for us, is how do we walk into the room? How do we step onto the mat? How do we put on our uniform? Where do we put our, our buki? How do we lay, lay them out? How do we bow to our partner? When do we bow to our partner? All of these details. And I think in the beginning in Aikido it can seem a little overwhelming and almost a little stuffy, I guess you could say, if you don't understand the purpose of it. The purpose of it is for self-control. The purpose of it is for our own growth. Can I control myself enough to remember when to bow? Can I control myself enough to remember when to speak and not to speak? How to step on the mat? With what foot? How do I tie my belt? How do I do all these things? It's not for somebody else, it's for ourselves. It is for our partners too, and it is for Aikido. But in the study of etiquette, which is constant, on the mat, and as well as off the mat when we're doing keto events together. Uh, it is for that idea of connectedness with my partner. I don't want to be rude to somebody else. I don't want to give somebody else a bad feeling. This is very, very important for uh, singers in a field that can be very um, difficult to deal with sometimes, personalities that can be challenging to deal with sometimes. And being in this environment uh, has definitely helped me in many ways in dealing with those kinds of situations and being able to stay calm and collected and say, I, I don't need to be rude, I don't need to give in to that situation. Uh, the rule of 10 is something that I think also helps with this uh, idea of connection with your partner and seeing what cannot be seen. The rule of 10 is something that uh, Jerome Sensei, who was my instructor for many, many years, talked about. And he said, 
If you're on the mat with your partner and your partner brings a level five energy, then you bring a level five energy. If your partner brings a level three energy, you bring a level seven energy. If your partner brings a level one, you bring a level nine that you need to make fit with the situation. Uh, and then it's similarly, if your partner brings level seven, you bring three. If they bring level nine, then you bring one to make fit with the situation so that the, the technique goes together. And the idea of this again is being connected with my partner and understanding what my partner wants and maybe why. There's some times where I'm very tired when I go to train and maybe I don't have the most energy. So then my partner's gonna pick up that slack or maybe there are some days I'm very excited, I'm full of energy, I wanna train and my partner's gonna relax a little bit because <laughs> maybe I'm gonna be a little too intense. Uh, but this idea of working together and staying connected with our partner. So the last fourth section today for this lecture is dealing with ego. We hear about ego a lot with singers, being a diva. Uh, also, we're gonna talk about portraying a character and managing expectations. The being a diva issue in singing, because there are so many pressures in singing, because of all the details that we talked about, the physical, mental, and emotional tension, it can be very easy for someone to respond to these pressures in a way that's unfortunate. And while in opera, you know, outside of opera, people think maybe, oh, the diva, this is, you know, this is a celebrated thing, oh, they're the diva, but uh, inside the world of opera, we don't really like divas too much because they make everyone's job a lot harder when they want to have it their way or they want to sing what they want to sing and when they want to sing it. Um, uh, heard a lot of famous stories of people being mad about what dressing room they're in and throwing the costumes on the floor and saying, this is my dressing room and things of this nature. It's really really unfortunate and it can be very challenging I think to communicate to people that choose to do those kinds of things and act that way as singers why that's wrong or why that's uh, not the best way to go and why it's problematic because again they don't know how to deal with that pressure in a better way they don't know how to deal with the emotions they're feeling in a better way I'm also portraying a character that's not a very nice person this is I believe Bryn Terfel and he's portraying a character named Scarpia in an opera called Posca um, that character is a very, very bad person. He's a very unfortunate person, kills a lot of people, uh, is very manipulative. And as a singer, living in that, in that world, being that person for an extended period of time, can make you sometimes not the nicest person without realizing it. And you'll, you'll go around and, and maybe carry some of that with you, and it can be very challenging to deal with people if they're, not, if they're playing a character that's not maybe the nicest person in the world. Or maybe it's also dealing with uh, uh, a character that you don't feel very connected to. Maybe they're a really negative character or they're a really um, challenging character and you feel anxious or nervous about it. It can be very challenging to deal with that too. And then managing expectations. The reality is in this career, it's very hard. It's unfair. Uh, I know a lot of people that have gone through their career and said, oh, I've been singing for so many years, I've auditioned so many places and I'm still not getting work. I'm not getting hired, or I'm a better singer than that person who did get hired, or I should be singing that role, not this role, or what, whatever it is, it's unfair. And uh, there are a lot of expectations that when reality kind of hits us as singers and we go, oh, maybe this isn't what I thought it was, or this is gonna take longer. So these things are very challenging to deal with. So how does Aikido help you with those things? I wanna talk about studying the other side, and the techniques won't work with ego, with a demonstration, and then uh, energy with form, a small lecture from Aikido. So studying the other side, in, at Lansing Community College, which is where I first uh, encountered Aikido, uh, my, my instructor, Jerome Sensei, would always give a lecture at the end of the first class, and he would talk about studying the other side, that we go out in the world and we think about what we need, what we want, how we need to get there, at what time, give me my, me, I, he would always say this. They said, in Aikido, we study how to be open, how to give, how to be connected with our partner, studying the other side. And that the hope is that in studying Aikido, we find some balance. So we can't always just give to everyone and not think for ourselves at all. We wouldn't be able to eat, but if we only think for ourselves all the time and we don't give to anybody else, we're gonna be off balance. So Aikido definitely studies the other side with that purpose in mind. And then techniques won't work with ego. So we're going to demonstrate two different techniques, uh, partner techniques, or, or I think, um, yes, two different techniques to demonstrate why they won't work with ego. The first technique, uh, Rich and Joe are going to do a body thrust with Tonto. Sorry, guys. Um, 
uh, and Rich is not going to pivot out of the way. So if Rich decides he's going to maybe not pivot, maybe he's going to try and grab the knife, he's not going to do the technique, he's still going to get stabbed. Techniques won't work with ego or more time. And this time, he'll do the technique correctly. And as we talked about before with the technique, um, if we do this again and stop right before the throw. So here, he's got a hold of, of Joe's hand. And to disarm, it would be a, actually a technique to break the wrist. So just go slowly without the throw. So if Joe were to fight this and say, I don't want, his wrist is going to get broken anyway, and he would just collapse to the ground. Instead, if Joe gives to the technique, it's easier for him to train together and practice together. So another way of looking at it is that if uh, Joe or Rich decided to be a diva in this situation, it wouldn't work out for either of them. Rich would either get stabbed, Joe would get his arm broken. In this situation, Joe um, doesn't, Rich doesn't, and then by Rich doing that, he, he could easily take the knife away from himself. And kind of the next technique that we're going to show is uh, um, uh, Udigrani, um, which is another very similar technique. You can also stop right before the throw. So in this situation, again, if you lean back and show, uh, just, just to the, the right before the throw. So in this, if you see, his, his elbow would very easily be broken. But uh, aside from that being a scary part, his arm is trapped. It's very scary, especially beginning to do a break fall from this position. It can be very, very nerve wracking. But okay, it's, it's okay. Just one more time. You also have to, as Uke, commit to this throw, same with, with Shte. Again, any idea of being a diva, any idea of having ego is just going to make things really, really uncomfortable for you uh, or, or possibly quite painful. Thank you, John. Uh, and so, you know, with that idea and how that relates to singing, again, in studying in this environment that it's not about pushing somebody's ego down or making them feel badly about themselves, but understanding I'm here to work uh, cooperatively with my partner. And again, the same themes uh, following through if I'm, I'm worried or I'm stressed or this is uncomfortable or maybe that last throw, I did a bad break fall and I'm in pain and I gotta get up and do it again. Um, I've never had any real serious injuries from Aikido except for maybe uh, a, a twisted ankle or, or you know, an unfortunate strain to, to a toe or something like that. Um, but I have felt uncomfortable and I felt sore I felt sore during training. It's, it can be hard to work through. And um, I've also been in situations, maybe with my partner, where I had a different idea than they did, and I wanted to do a technique um, faster or slower or sharper or, or what have you. And I had to make fit with them. I had to work with the partner that I had that day. And as soon as I did that, the techniques got better, and it got easier to work with my partner. So being in this environment, it really kind of trains the diva out of you, if you will. And going and trying to approach singing in the same mindset and the same idea uh, helps also to deal with people that do unfortunately decide to act like divas. It also helps me to deal with characters that might be difficult or challenging to portray that I know that I still have a job to do and I'm going to work hard at it in the same way that I do Aikido. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if I'm scared, even if I'm worried that I'm not going to be very successful, I trust my techniques, I trust what I've learned. And then energy with form. Energy with form, Shise Shamaste is a, a, a lecture that uh, I've heard a couple of times before. And Akira Sensei, who is the head of our art now, he says, energy with form, the idea is like uh, a snake and a shoot of bamboo. The snake is very wriggly and twisty and turny. And if you try to make it straight, you can't. And you, you pull it really tight, you know, maybe you killed the snake, you could make it straight. But then what's the point? It's always going to twist and turn and wriggle. But if you feed a snake through a shoot of bamboo, it becomes straight. It becomes straight because of the shoot of bamboo. 
studying Aikido is the shoot of bamboo. We are the energy that's twisting and turning. And the more that we feed ourselves through to that form and that idea, the more our energy will be shaped into the form that we want it to be. Uh, it's the same thing in singing. Why do we rehearse so much so that when we're on stage under pressure, we present what we want to? Why do we train so much in Aikido? So in the situation, if we ever had to deal with something in real life on the street, or if we're testing, or if we're doing a demonstration, that it always ends up being the same way. But it's also mental and emotional. If I put myself in the right mental and emotional place in training in Aikido, you know, several times a week, it helps me personally very much so uh, to deal with the pressures of being a singer and being a professional singer. It's helped me very much throughout my whole education. The whole reason that this concept of these lectures came about is as I was training in Aikido, and I was here at MSU getting my undergraduate degree, there would be things that Sensei would tell me in training and I'd go to my lesson the next day and my professor would tell me the exact same things, but it was about singing and it was very, very confusing in the beginning and I, I just kind of started to make the connections together. So, some final thoughts. The idea of holistic singing. Um, so Aikido is really great for physical fitness. I kind of mentioned this before, but singers are always looking for a way to stay fit. <laughs> uh, how we look on stage is unfortunately part of the career. So uh, uh, things have changed maybe since the 60s. And so being physically fit is very important. It's something that we have to look for, but we have to be very careful with how we train that. Uh, I know some singers that uh, do a lot of weightlifting. And the problem with weightlifting can be that it can create a lot of tension in your throat if you're carrying a lot of weight and doing it a lot too much create too much tension or too much tension in your core. Uh, as I said before, with running, with yoga, with swimming, there are these things that are presented that can be problematic. With Aikido, there might be other things. We have to have a room with mats. We can do the techniques alone, but the best benefits come with a partner. Uh, we, we have to have people to train with. Um, but the techniques that I found, I can train as hard as I want to in Aikido, and I can push myself as hard as I want to in Aikido, and I am uh, always find the next day or the day after to sing. I never have to deal for a long period of time to get tension out of my body from weightlifting or some other kind of uh, exercise that's not conducive to singing. Um, and then I, the idea again of coordinated mind, body, and spirit. Singing is definitely coordinated mind, body, and spirit. We can't just get up on stage and make sounds with our voice. We have to have a purpose and intention behind it. We have to work with the people that we're on stage with and present a, a complete idea to the audience, a complete technique, if you will, in the same way that we do with Aikido. Uh, and it's a great stress reliever. Uh, let's be honest, uh, again, singing professionally is very stressful. Learning to be a professional singer is very stressful. Finding an outlet that is a stress reliever helps us to become physically fit, presents these benefits, the mind-body coordination, um, and that it, knowing and doing this training, I know that I'm helping myself to be a better singer at the same time is invaluable to me. So that's the completion of this lecture. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, we'll take a brief intermission before the next one. Thank you very much.